Welcome everyone to our latest Wellness Wednesday. Today's topic is ergonomics for working at home or the office. And our sponsor today is the Senior Executives Association. We could not do any of this, put on the challenge, do the work that we do without our community of feds and supporters, including today's gold sponsor, the Senior Executives Association. SEA and FIA share a founder, and we've been walking together through the last 36 years with our joint missions to serve federal employees. SEA's help and support have been integral to FIA's success over the years, and today I'm delighted to introduce partner and Director of Government Affairs at Shaw Bransford and Roth, SEA Director of Policy and Outreach, and FIA board member, Jason Breifel. Jason? Well, thanks so much, Robin. Thanks to FIA for having this awesome series of Wellness Wednesdays throughout this entire month. Uh, thanks to all of you who are dialing in today and joining us. Uh, I'm really excited for our session today, um, and, and I want to want to dive right into things. But uh, again, as, as an, uh, someone who works at an organization that was founded uh, by the founder of FIA, you know, this stuff is personal to me, it's personal to us at the Senior Executives Association, and, and helping federal employees uh, thrive uh, as people, as employees, is, is key, and uh, we're, we're really thankful for everyone being here with us today. Uh, I'm really excited to introduce our presenter for today. Um, Kelly Pesanelli has received her BS in Health Sciences from Boston University and went on to complete her master's in physical therapy also at Boston University. After graduating, she worked in the occupational medicine department in the New England Baptist Hospital for 10 years. She continued her physical therapy practice at the Ryan Center for Sports Medicine the next seven years with a primary focus on occupational injuries. During this time, she started an injury prevention program for all BU custodians and trades workers. And then she joined the faculty at BU's Sargent College for Health and Rehabilitation Sciences. She currently works at BU as a senior lecturer uh, with a primary focus on the US healthcare system and the prevention of occupational injuries. Kelly, thank you so much for being back with us again uh, for our Wednesday Wellness Webinar. Again, you did a great job last year. We're so thrilled that you came back again to join us. Uh, over to you. Great. Thank you very much for that wonderful introduction, Jason, um, and also Robin for um, inviting me back again this year. Um, you know, as Robin and Jason know in our pre- um, meeting talk, you know, prevention for me is why I went and got my advanced degree in physical therapy. I don't ever want to see anybody injured, um, which is why I'm thrilled to be here with you today, where we're going to talk about work from home and work from office. I know some of you are back in work um, one, two, three, four, some five days a week. So I really want to talk about, you know, how do we prevent injuries? Um, when we are at home working um, and in the office. So ergonomics is fitting the job to you. So it's not saying, okay, you know, here's, um, here's the job, now figure it out. No, 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 no. How do we maximize your body position, whether you're sitting, standing, walking, so that you can maximize productivity while we're reducing discomfort, fatigue, and injury. And I think what's most important to know, right, we come in all shapes and sizes. And typically when you look at, you know, ergonomics, when you look at desks and when you look at chairs, you know, they're designed for the people in the middle of that bell-shaped curve. You know, for those of us that are under 5'2", for those of, the, of us that are over 6'2", um, we really, really, really have to be mindful about making sure our setup is appropriate for us. Um, I know sometimes going back to work now, a lot of offices have cut back on space and you're doing office sharing. So, you know, if that is you, you can't assume that the office that you went into last week is going to have the same exact setup. You really have to be mindful and say, okay, here we are. Good morning. Um, is my office set up the same as yesterday, whether you're at home or the office? If the answer is no, that's what we're going to talk about. So what are some ergonomic risk factors, okay? There's three main ones. So one would be repetitive motion. What do I mean by repetitive motion? 
A lot of you will have these really nice devices called a mouse for those of you that are working on a desktop or a laptop with an external mouse. And you spend your day moving the mouse back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and just using your wrist. That can lead to a repetitive motion injury and will potentially eventually lead to wrist pain and discomfort. Awkward postures here on the top. So many times I see people hunched over a laptop. That is an awkward posture, right? So as I'm bending forward here, gravity's trying to pull my head down, gravity's trying to pull my shoulders down, and all of the muscles in my back have to work really, 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 really hard so my head doesn't fall down. That awkward posture can absolutely lead to neck and upper back pain. Last is a sustained posture. Sitting here for eight hours a day, not moving, I don't have to go to the bathroom, I'm not hungry, I'm just gonna sit here and I'm gonna work and work and work and work and work for eight straight hours. That also can lead to discomfort and pain in a musculoskeletal disorder. So when you talk about musculoskeletal disorder, what do I mean? Um, so musculoskeletal little, literally means muscle and skeleton or muscle and bone, right? Um, so that's where you wake up and you're like, oh my gosh, my neck is so stiff. Oh my goodness, my low back hurts. Oh my goodness, my you know, my upper back hurts. Oh my goodness, my elbow hurts, right? So it's these repetitive motions awkward postures and sustained postures that can lead to musculoskeletal pain and or disorders. Okay, so risk factors, right? So first and foremost, we have those awkward postures, right? He's doing a good job sitting, you know, back in his chair, but then really hunching forward over that laptop. You know, we're going to talk in a minute about, okay, you know, what can we do to correct that posture? And here we are. What you can do, um, if you have an external monitor, that's fabulous. If you don't, what you can do is you can take either reams of paper, okay, or we're going to see in a minute, one of those lovely Amazon boxes that are probably still coming to your house, raise up your laptop, and then use an external mouse and an external keyboard and plug that into your laptop so that you can be sitting upright and erect and avoiding, you know, this very primitive posture, um, which can lead to neck, back, and shoulder pain. Okay. So designing your workspace, really, really, really important. Um, most of us at home are either going to, as I am right now, welcome to my home, uh, working from my kitchen table, okay? So my kitchen table allows for me to be at the best possible position for me. Um, we live in the city. So when we are working from home, it is known that this is my work from home space. I do not have that luxury um, because we eat dinner at our kitchen table. I don't have that luxury of having my workspace stay the same every single solitary day. Um, so every morning when I'm working from home, I have my box to prop my laptop up. I have my external mouse, my external keyboard, and I'm really mindful about taking my time and setting up my workspace. Um, I try to stay away from household activities, but at lunchtime, at snack time, um, there is some walking back and forth in front of me, um, which I really try to minimize. And I try to block off time in my calendar. So when it's snack time and everybody's home, I can be free for those 15 or 20 minutes as well. So your ergonomic setup, okay? So there's six different things that you really need to take into consideration, okay? One is your chair, okay? A lot of us are working when we are at home from your kitchen chair, your dining room chair, which is absolutely fine. What you want to make sure when you are sitting in your chair is that your hips are slightly above your knees, okay? Why is that? When your hips are slightly above your knees, it allows your pelvis right here to tilt forward slightly, 
which creates the natural curve in your low back. What I see a lot of people do is take a towel and roll it up and put it in the small of their back. And that is not something you should ever do. So what I recommend, let me show you my setup, is that you take a good old fashioned bath towel. Okay, so here we are. Here's my bath towel from my bathroom. And I fold it in half. I fold it in half again. And then the top third of the towel, I fold down. I turn that around. So my towel is thicker in the back and thinner in the front. And I put that thick section on the base of my chair. And I sit on my towel so it raises my hips up a little bit. Automatically doing that, I have a natural lordotic curve in my back, which is going to put my spine in proper alignment. Next is sitting all the way back in your chair making sure your arms are bent to a 90 to 120 degree angle. So 120 degrees means slightly down. My wrists are straight. And when sitting on your chair, if your feet do not hit touch the ground, what you can do is take a box or a book um, and put it under your feet so that the ground comes up to your feet. Your monitor should be approximately 18 to 20 inches away from you, okay? Your keyboard and your mouse should be directly in front of you. The one thing that isn't correct about this picture, and it's actually a mistake that a lot of people make, is if you're using an external keyboard, there are little legs at the back of it that people tend to put up, causing the keyboard to tilt up slightly. That is actually the wrong position for your wrist. When you think about your wrist, your wrist when you type wants to be in a relaxed position. When your hand and your wrist are up, the muscles in your forearm stay contracted, okay? That can lead to elbow pain. What you want is your hand to be slightly down sloping. So that is why you never put the rests on the back of a keyboard up because it can lead to um, it can lead to wrist pain. It can lead to elbow pain. Make sure every twenty to twenty five minutes to please take a break from a screen. Okay, so selecting a chair. So here we are, typical home setup, right? Here's your kitchen or dining room table. Here's the chair that you're using. And what a lot of people will do is they will just take a pillow and sit on it so that they have a cushion underneath them. What you can see here is that cushion is fine, right? But it's allowing the hips to stay level with the knees, right? And we remember we want this low back curve to tilt in slightly. That's why I recommend using a towel, okay? So this cushion should be thicker in the back and lower in the front, allowing our hips to be elevated above our knees. Okay. So selecting a chair height, okay? When you're looking around at home, you're like, huh, what chair should I use? What you want to do as a rule of thumb is stand up, face your chair, and make sure your knees are in line with the seat pan height. And what you can see on the image of this chair, right, is that it has a cushion on it, allowing the hips to be above your knees. Your feet should be able to rest comfortably on the floor. Again, if they can't, use a book, use a very small box underneath your feet so that the ground comes up to your feet. In terms of the depth of your chair, what you don't want to happen is you don't want the edge of the chair to come in contact with the back of your knee. Why is that? Because every nerve and artery that supplies your lower leg and foot 
travels through that crease in the back of your knee. So if the chair is coming into contact with the back of your knee, it can cut off the circulation and the nerves that are transferring information up and down. Um, that can cause your feet and legs to go to, they feel like they go to sleep, right? You can't really move them, they get numb and tingly. So what you wanna make sure with your chair is that you are able to fit two to three fingers between the edge of your chair and the back of your knees. So some people will say, well, I have one chair at home and it's too long. So what in heaven's name do I do then? So what you can do then is you can get a very, very, very firm cushion and put it at the back of your chair, which causes you to sit forward just slightly. Okay. So your backrest, what you wanna make sure in your chair is that you are sitting, your back is upright and erect and supported. Why is that? When it's not, okay, and you're leaning forward, as I talked about a few minutes ago, gravity is pulling you forward. So all of the muscles right now, as I sit here hunched over my laptop, all of the muscles in my back are contracting and contracting and contracting and contracting and contracting because gravity is trying to pull me forward, okay? So they're working and working and working and working. Eventually, that can lead to a muscle strain. When you are sitting upright and erect and supported in your chair, you're not having to work as hard against gravity, right? Because you're supported by the back of your chair versus being in an unsupported position. Again, like we talked about, you should be sitting on um, the seat pan should allow your hips, seat pan is what you sit on, should be higher in the back and lower in the front. So some patients will say to me, okay, if there's one thing I were to invest in, like just one thing, what would it be? So I would have to say in my clinical practice, the most common musculoskeletal injury that I see from people um, that are working at a computer day in, day out um, is low back pain. And the low back pain is happening again because of the position of our low back and our hips. So a company created something called a tush cush, right? So this is, I'm teaching you how to make a homemade one um, by taking a towel, folding the back of it over by a third and sitting on it. The tush cush, as you can see here, higher in the back, lower in the front, higher in the back, lower in the front, puts your pelvis in an optimal position to allow for neutral alignment of your low back, mid back, um, and cervical spine or neck. Um, so it's the if you were to win that um, $50 Amazon gift card um, in today's raffle and you were to say, okay, if there's one thing I were to spend, I think it's $49.95 on, it would be a tush cush. They are absolutely life-changing. Patients that I recommended them to, um, they're really easy to candle, carry. They have a nice Velcro handle. Um, my patients have take them on airplanes. You know, you sit on an airplane for three hours. You're like, oh my gosh, my back is killing me. If you have the tush cush, your back isn't going to be killing you. Um, people also put them in their cars for people that don't have, uh, that have back pain um, and have a hard time sitting in a car for a prolonged period of time. Um, it's a, a wonderful investment. If you don't want to make that investment, you just use a bath towel um, like I showed you a few minutes ago. Okay, so selecting a chair that has armrests, okay? So if you're back at work or you're at home and you do have a chair that has armrests, what you want to make sure is that the armrests, okay, um, that are adjustable going up and down, okay, allow you to have your shoulders relaxed, not up towards your ears, but relaxed down. And when the shoulders are relaxed down and your arms are hanging naturally by your side, that is where the armrest should be placed, okay? Um, the armrest should come in direct alignment with the desk or work surface that you are working on, right? So that, um, the desk is just literally a continuous extension of the armrest. 
Sometimes people will have to raise their chair up a little bit um, if you're in an office chair in order to allow that to happen. And then they'll say, well, now my feet are dangling. That's okay. Just go get a ream of paper and put it under your feet to bring the ground up to your feet. When you are working at home, if you do not have an external keyboard and mouse, um, what you want to make sure is that you're sitting all the way back in your chair and you're pushed in really close to your workspace so that your forearms can be comfortably rested on your work surface. Why is that? When they're not, what we tend to do is shrug our shoulders and that can lead to neck pain and it can actually also lead to headaches. Okay. So again, correct sitting posture. Your monitor, okay, when it is adjusted, okay, and you are looking to, almost everybody should probably be on a laptop right now. So when I am sitting back, if my laptop were at an optimal position for me right now, I should be able to see the top line of my Zoom screen. So mine would say mute, stop video, participants, et cetera. The correct height allows you to stare directly forward and see the topmost line of the document that you're working on, which would be right up here, right below the top edge of your monitor. And then what you notice, so if I want everybody to do this with me right now, I want you to stare straight ahead. And then I want you to relax your eyes. And what you'll see is your eyes go down slightly when they relax. By having the monitor at eye level height, and then relaxing your eyes down allows you to just use very subtle eye movements to see your entire screen. What you don't want to do is if it's too low, you spend all day looking down, which can lead to neck pain. If it's too high, you spend all day looking up, which can also lead to neck pain. Okay. So again, when I get up in the morning and I set up my workspace, I put my Amazon box underneath my laptop and I make sure when I look straight ahead, I'm able to see the topmost line of the document I'm working on and then just glance my eyes down and I'm able to see the entire screen. Um, keyboard and mouse, as you can see here, your arms should be able to rest comfortably either on your armrests of your chair or on your workspace. Um, your external mouse, what you want to make sure is your external mouse doesn't have any tension on it. So you don't want to be fighting with that mouse cord. What I recommend people do um, is put a lot of slack on the mouse and then tack it down with a piece of tape. So that way, you know, nothing is going to stand in the way of that cord, putting any tension on your mouse that can create excess um, force production in your forearm. Okay. And again, your feet want to be resting comfortably on the ground, um, not dangling in space and not just the ball of your foot on the ground. You want your whole foot to be able to comfortably rest on the floor. So here is a picture, okay, of being able to use your laptop at home. This is very similar to what my setup looks like. So here we have three reams of paper allowing her to be able to look straight ahead and see the topmost line of her laptop screen. She has an external mouse and an external keyboard. So this is the way in which we can create a desktop computer out of a laptop computer. Um, this mouse was $3.99 on Amazon. My keyboard was $6.99 on Amazon. So for just over $10, um, I am able to get a home workstation set up um, and I grab reams of paper um, from work um, for when I don't have, when my Amazon box starts to wear after time. So this is a way for you to be able to set up an ergonomically correct home workspace. Um, so again, with your arms, you want to make sure your forearms are supported at home. Okay, you don't want your arms unsupported all day because again, the muscles on the top of your shoulder will then have to contract um, isometrically, right? So they don't move, um, but they have to contract all day 
Um, and that can eventually lead to neck pain um, and it can eventually lead to headaches as well. So again, you wanna pull your chair as close to your work surface as possible, okay? If you do not have the ability to raise your laptop up, okay? So you can see here, she does not. What you can notice is she's glancing down with just her eyes. So her neck is in a beautifully correct position, right? Um, it's completely neutral. And she's just looking down with her eyes instead of looking down with her neck, which again can lead to neck pain and headaches. So using a mouse, for those of you that have a mouse at home, what you want to make sure okay, is that your wrist is not coming in contact with a sharp edge. Why? Every nerve, artery, and vein that supplies your hand travels right through this space. It's called your carpal tunnel. And when you put compression or pressure on your carpal tunnel, it can lead to numbness, tingling, and loss of sensation in your hand. So what you wanna make sure is that your forearm is completely supported so that there is no pressure on your wrist. When you are using a mouse, you don't want to just use your wrist. You want to do a motion where your arm is moving, not just your wrist moving back and forth. Multiple monitors. So some of you um, will need a split screen in order to be able to work. Some of you will work on side-by-side -side laptops. Some of you will have a desktop and have two monitors. So what you notice here is that when you have two monitors, your direct line of sight, okay, should be you looking in the middle of both monitors. So that way by rotating your head, okay, there's a 35 degree angle, very slightly, you're able to see both monitors, okay? Um, that will prevent neck pain and potentially headaches as well, okay? So your line of sight is in between the two monitors, allowing for just a very small degree of rotation of your neck to be able to see both monitors. Eye strain, okay, so here we are, we're home. It's a bright and sunny day for some of us. You want to sit perpendicular to a window, okay? You do not want your the light to be coming directly at your eyes and you also don't want to be backlit because what that will do is that will cause significant eye strain. You want to try to use as much perpendicular, give you an idea. So I'm sitting perpendicular to my windows, allowing for natural light to come in, okay? Um, you also, if you don't have natural light, you would like a light to be behind you and not necessarily glaring down overhead. So preventing eye strain. Um, so many of us have, you know, are just looking at, you know, whether we're looking at our smartphones, uh, whether we're looking at a computer, we spend more hours in a day looking at a screen um, than you probably ever thought you would. One really good rule of thumb is for every 20 minutes that you're looking at a screen, okay, which you've been on this call now um, for 30 minutes. So I want everybody to take a minute right now and I want you to look 20 feet away from your screen for the next 20 seconds. Okay, so this allows our eyes to be able to look um, off into the distance um, and can really help to protect your eyes. So I'll give everybody about five more seconds of lo looking off into the distance to protect your eyes. So your work surface, okay? So here we are, we're working at our home desk, we're working back in the office at our desk um, and we have papers printed out. How do we organize them? The work 
that you're working on currently, I call it your usual work, should be right in front of you. If there's something you don't need immediately, put that off in the distance, okay? So that way, everything that you need right now is just at a small reach away, okay? And then the periphery should be clear and used as a non-working surface. So what you notice is the furthest you will have to reach for one of the documents you're working on is just at an arm's distance away. But that's your occasional work. You don't really need that right, right, right now, okay? Your usual work or what you're working on right now should be directly in front of you. Standing desk at home. So we all have the ability to create a standing desk at home. What does that look like for me? So let's walk over and I will show you how I created a standing desk at home. So what you can see just behind me is a high counter that leads from my dining room to a kitchen. And I have placed a wonderful Amazon box on that counter. What I will do is I will take my laptop and I will place my laptop on that box, creating a home standing desk. Um, I could probably give the rest of this presentation from my home standing desk. Why is it important to transition from sitting to standing during your workday? It, it's, it um, is a better position for your low back. So the greatest load is put on your low back when you're in a seated position. We are not designed um, you know, from an evolutionary standpoint to be sitting all day long. So being able to transition from sitting to standing will really, really, really help to prevent back pain, neck pain, shoulder pain. Um, what you wanna make sure is that you want shoes on when you're standing um, and you want something that's nice and cushiony. Um, and you do also want to be able to move around um, a little bit. So whether it's just shifting weight side to side, raising up onto your toes a little bit um, to really make sure you're ensuring circulation from your feet back up to your heart when you're standing. And I am gonna give the rest of this presentation standing and save my back. So here are some really good examples of poor posture. I wish I didn't see this all the time, but I absolutely say this all the time. I'm past the point in my career where I say, can I take a picture of you so I can just show you what you look like? Because you are gonna be amazed at what you look like. One of the things that you can do if you're going back into work or even at home, if you have a loved one or you have somebody over, ask them to take a picture of you. And that way you can see what you really look like in real life. Because what we think we look like isn't always what we truly look like, right? So you can see here, long day, totally done, answering the last emails and slouched back in the chair. Not great for your back and not great for your neck. Um, if you're having a hard time seeing the computer screen, please get an eye exam. Um, you don't want to be squinting to look at your computer screen. Again, you know, gravity is pulling his head down and all of the muscles in his upper back and neck have to contract isometrically. Um, this is a great cause for neck, um, neck pain and headaches. Um, same thing here. You can see the monitor is just way, way, way too low. So by propping that monitor up will allow him to sit upright and erect in his chair. Um, I see this a lot in my students. Um, hunched over their laptop, right? Backs not supported, looking really close at the monitor. Um, so again, this is somebody that should be sitting upright and erect, move in a little bit closer to the table um, and just glance down with their eyes to look at the computer screen. Next, walking meetings. So a recent study came out that showed that when you're walking and you're in a meeting, it has shown a positive effect on creative thinking. I linked it down here for you. It can also reduce Zoom fatigue. Um, so when I was trying to find a picture depicting this for you today, so many times I found a picture of somebody walking and looking down at their phone. I'm like, oh my goodness, like great for you that you're up and walking, but you're going to wind up hurting your neck. 
Um, if you have the ability, you know, if you know you have an hour long meeting and everybody's on Zoom and you don't need to see each other, you know, you're just going over policies or, you know, uh, planning for your next event or, um, you know, talking about a case that's happening right now. Can you take that meeting while you're walking? Can you put headphones in? I know a lot of you, it sounds like you're doing a step challenge right now. Could you take that meeting while you're walking um, and really, really, really try to reduce what I call Zoom fatigue, right? Um, so you're getting your steps, you're getting exercise, promoting healthy lifestyle, um, getting out, getting some fresh air. Um, and again, research has showed that there's a positive effect on creative thinking when you're walking. It's also been shown that once it, once you go out and take a walk, when you come back, uh, to work again, you're actually shown to have uh, more creative thinking too um, for the first 20 minutes after taking a walk and sitting down. Last, and this is a new one for me this year um, on minimizing stress. A lot of our work environments have changed. Some of us, you know, during the pandemic, some of us pre pandemic worked in the office five days a week, and then the pandemic came, and now we have to work from home, and we have to, you know, kind of rearrange our life to work from home. And, you know, now that, you know, people are vaccinated and boosted um, and feeling more comfortable, and some, you know, Robin was saying, going back into the work, uh, on to the workplace one day a week, those transitions can be stressful. Um, so how do we minimize that stress? So first is create a dedicated workspace, right? So like we talked about, here's my kitchen table and that chair right over there in the far distance. That's my home workspace. Um, so when I'm sitting there, it's like, okay, mom's working, period, the end. Like that is her time. We can't interrupt her. She's sitting there, um, I, you know, creating a boundary. You know, this is my work time. As soon as I'm done, I'll totally help you with whatever that, you know, issue is that's happening. But when I'm there, that's my workspace. Um, so really trying to set boundaries between this is my work time and this is my personal time. Keep a routine, right? Um, when you're working from home, it's really easy to say, oh, you know, I, I can just do a little bit more because I'm, you know, I'm not commuting anymore um, and I have more time, but really try to keep a routine. You know, if your workday starts at eight o'clock, start your workday at eight o'clock. If your workday ends at five o'clock, end your workday at five o'clock and really try to keep that routine throughout the week. Um, next is healthy meals, right? Um, if you're home, you have the ability, you know, take 20 minutes, take a half an hour, make a healthy lunch um, from what you have in your refrigerator. Um, don't just, oh my gosh, I have no time today. I'm just going to snack and snack and snack because I have no time to eat. Really try to carve out some time to have a healthy meal in the middle of the day. Working from home can be isolating, okay? Um, sometimes for a lot of people, if you live alone, you don't have work, um, you know, roommates or a partner or children. Um, being at work was socialization for you. And now you're home. Really make sure you make time to connect with your coworkers, right? Whether it's, you know, let's set up that meeting to do a walking meeting. Let's do that walking meeting together. You may not physically be together, but at least you feel together because you're doing that meeting and you're out doing something together, but yet separate. Commit to health and exercise. Um, so you'll never read a study that says exercise is bad for you as long as your doctor says to you, yes, it is healthy for you to exercise. Try to build some of that, whether it's before your workday starts, after your workday, um, try to build that into um, your work routine. Um, dedicate downtime, right? Um, it is okay to say, you know what, I need 15 minutes right now to just go out and take a walk and clear my head because I'm home and it's really stressful. Um, last is get enough sleep. So studies have shown that um, looking at screens before bed can really, really, really interfere with our sleep. Please try to put in, you know, screens can be an iPad, screens can be an iPhone, you know, uh, you know, if you use an, an Android user, any type of screen um, tells your brain that, you know, it's natural light and it's not time to go to bed right now. So really, really, really try to close your screens down um, at least two hours before bedtime. These tips can really, really, really help to minimize stress. Um, and these all came from the CDC. So these are CDC guidelines for minimizing stress. 
here are some resources for you, um, CDC, OSHA, OSHA ergonomics, um, to look at in your own time to get more information on the topics that I talked about today. And now I get to open it up for questions. Um, so please feel free to either type them into the chat um, or into the q and I actually have both open. Or you're welcome to, to raise your hand and um, unmute yourself and I can answer your questions live. Should we wear shoes at home during the work day to get some type of support or does it make a difference? Rena, that was a fabulous question. Um, absolutely, you should be wearing shoes at home. Um, so everybody knows that your foot or, you know, your foot has an arch, okay, right? So this is what my foot would look like from the side. So my toes touch the ground. I have a little bit of an arch here in the middle of my foot and then the back of my foot touches the ground. Um, so when you're standing, gravity starts to pull that arch down and flatten it out, okay? You need that arch. That arch is your shock absorber when you walk. So your foot hits the ground, that arch flattens naturally a little bit to absorb the shock and then comes up. So when you're standing, if you don't have shoes on, that arch is gonna be pulled down and down and down and down and down by gravity. So yes, um, you know, I have a pair of dedicated home uh, sneakers that I wear that are very, very, very cushiony, actually just got a new pair, um, that help to provide cushion and support for my feet when I'm standing. Really good question. Um, you know, you'll see sometimes, I used to get this question a lot, well, I see people run barefoot. Yeah, some people trained, you know, from the first step that they took um, to be barefoot. And they built up those, your really, really, really small muscles in your foot, they're called your intrinsic foot muscles. So they have built up the strength in those really small muscles in their foot. Um, for most of us, um, the first time you took a step, your loved one or parent uh, went out and bought shoes and put shoes on you. So essentially from childhood, you know, our feet have really been almost in a casted position. So our feet are used to be in a very supportive environment. And we, you know, just from birth really haven't been trained to build up those small muscles in your feet. Um, so most of us do need shoes when we're standing. I noticed a difference after working at home for several months and started wearing shoes instead of slippers. Yeah, shoes instead of slippers. Kelly, uh, one question on my side, I know you, you briefly talked about uh, being on Zoom and on your cell phone and looking down. Um, any recommendations on, on how to improve uh, your, your posture, I guess, when, when you're typing, when you're texting, what, what do you do? So typing and texting, you know, I'm going to show you, hold on. So when I'm typing and texting, what I tend to do, let me go down just a little bit. Okay. Is I hold my phone close to me. I use two hands. Um, I type with my thumbs and I hold it about, uh, 15 inches away from me. Um, but what I do is I make sure I hold it up. So I'm not, oh my gosh, all the time, you know, walking down Commonwealth Avenue by Fenway Park this morning um, to walk to work, you know, everybody's walking down the street with their head down. That's what's going to lead to neck and back pain. Um, so I am up here. Okay. So my phone is directly in front of my face and not leading to neck pain. The other thing for you to remember too, you know, if it's a lengthy text that you have to return, um, you know, and you have one of these Apple devices and you have an Apple computer, um, you can return them from your, um, from your desktop. That's great advice. Thank you. Um, um, the other thing too, is you can talk to text, right? That's true. Yeah. Um, so Siri, send Dan a text. <laughs> well, some Siri is probably going to turn on right now. I probably shouldn't have said that. Um, you know, send Dan a text. Great. What would you like to send Dan? And then talk to text really can help as well. Um, and there's a question, uh, are there wrist, uh, excuse me, are there wrist exercises that are good to do? So, so one of the things I try to steer away from is giving um, advice in terms of exercises to do because everybody's different and the cause of wrist pain for everybody is different. Um, what I can tell you is that um, if you're having wrist pain while you're at your workstation, one of the things um, that you can do just troubleshooting from home is be in the position where you're having the pain, have somebody take a picture of you and then compare and contrast that to the picture I gave you of how you should be set up, 
Okay. Cause a lot of times it's literally from your setup and you're like, Oh my goodness. I didn't even realize that my wrist was resting on the edge of my desk or my table. Um, I didn't even realize that I was using just my wrist to move back and forth when I use my mouse, um, instead of using my whole arm. Um, so I would really, I would take a, have somebody take a picture of you and say, wait a minute, I went to this presentation. I know this, uh, zoom recording will be sent to you. Um, go back over the zoom recording and you're welcome to send my slides out to everybody if you'd like, so that they have access to them. Um, and really look at your setup and say, oh, wait a minute. Yeah. My wrist is resting on something. Oh, wait a minute. I do move my wrist all the time. I'm a person who used to who loves to be without shoes. I normally wear slippers on my house all day long. Is that problematic? If your slippers are supportive, that's okay. Um, what you don't want is something that's just very, very, very flat and doesn't have any support for your arch. Um, so it depends on your slippers. Um, I missed the information about chairs, office phone rang. That's not right. Um, I'm really short, welcome to my world. And my office chair at home is too big. What can I do to fit in it better? Um, so what you had missed is that you can take either a box or some reams of paper and put them underneath your feet to put to bring the ground up to your feet. Sitting Indian style is absolutely not what you wanna do. Um, we also talked about using a towel to allow your hips to be above your knees, um, to put your low back and your pelvis into more neutral alignment. But Carol, if you have a minute to just go back and listen to like the first 10 minutes of what I talked about and see the pictures, um, I think it would really, really, really help you. And there's a question on here about the uh, generic stretches to do while seated. Uh, Boston University has a great ergonomic site, and I can put that link into uh, the stretches that they give, if you'd like. Yes, that's totally fine. Just know that if you are having pain, you don't want to just randomly start doing stretches, right? So these are more prevention and optimal health. But if something's bothering you, please say something to your provider. The armrests of my chair are too far apart. Any trips so I'm not spreading my arms out to use the armrests. So Megan, welcome to my world too. Um, I actually don't use the armrests on my chair. Um, so what I do is I bring my, I put those armrests down. I bring my chair up. So the armrests actually rest under my desk and I lift my chair up so I can use my desk as an armrest instead of using um the armrests on the chair, right? So you and I are probably in the same category where, you know, we're below 5'2 or 5'3 and office ergonomic equipment just wasn't designed for our body type. Um, so I actually don't use my armrests. I actually use my desk and I rest my forearms on my desk because they're too far apart. And then what happens is as my arms bow out to the side, I'm like, oh, why is my neck killing me? Well, I'm using my armrests and they're too far apart from me. Um, sometimes armrests on chairs, um, will slide in and slide out. Not all of them do, mine don't. Um, so what you do is just don't use the armrests on your chairs and use the desk to support your forearms. Thank you for giving us things to think about and uh, you know, helping us all think about how our posture and our work setup can impact our overall health. Um, it's, it's something that's, that's important for all of us, whether we're still working at home, working hybrid, going back to the office. Um, so thank you for all of that. And thanks everybody for great questions today. Again, thank you all so much for joining us today. Um, we hope you'll join us next week when we have our final Wellness Wednesday. Um, next week we'll have an introduction to yoga, a gentle yoga class for everyone. Thanks all. Bye everyone, thank you for coming.